Okay guys, so uh, what I've done now is uh, kind of clean up the engine bay a little bit. I'm prepping uh, prepping it to use some rubberized um, uh, chassis paint, just like undercoating. Um, so a couple things I want to show you um, in regards to kind of cleaning up the engine bay for, a, for this Subaru swap. Um, this might... Uh, irritate some of you but what I've done is uh, break out the angle grinder and actually grind it off a few brackets I figure if you're putting in a Subaru um, you're probably not a purist and uh, cutting off a few brackets uh, probably isn't going to be a big deal um, it'll make the installation much cleaner than trying to leave it um, to go back to an air-cooled form so let's take a look all right, so what we have is the vent for the uh, gas tank right here. It connects to this side over here, um, and it has a bracket, if we look, right here that connects up to kind of the uh, a more substantial frame. Um, so just kind of grinded that off to kind of clear some space for a radiator on this side. Uh, the other thing that I did was actually uh, grind off this bracket, which I believe holds the uh, um, air cleaner box, and it sat approximately right there, and I grinded that off as well. And then the item that most people are probably going to be upset with is the cooling tin fin here. I actually grinded that off. It makes it so much easier to mount a radiator. Now I did leave it in my 73 conversion, but in my opinion, it would be so, this is just gonna be a lot cleaner. Now I've taped up some of the wiring in preparation for um, some of that rubberized uh, undercoating. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, work through that and I'll catch up with you and continue the chassis prep portion of our series. Done. I sprayed the rubberized undercoating and uh, it's looking pretty good. Um, a few wet spots still so kind of waiting to do uh, anything else until, until that completely dries. I'm going to wait overnight and then uh, continue the project uh, tomorrow morning. But um, just, we'll just do a quick close up here. The right side's looking pretty good, and we pan around, and we see that the left side is also coated. Now this is going to dry to kind of a matte finish, and it should look pretty good with a shiny engine inside. A couple things. Um, first off, here's the one-way valve for the brake line, um, the actual vacuum line that goes to the brake booster. I'm going to actually put that in. It's kind of where my finger is pointing to and I like uh, relocating it just so that it's a nice straight shot uh, directly to the uh, engine. It's really easy to do when the engine's out so I'm going to go ahead and do that. Another thing is the throw out bearing. Got a new one right here. I'm just going to pop that in. And then um, also just because it's easier to work with the uh, engine out I'm going to install this uh, stock fuel filter that came from our donor car. I'm going to install it on the firewall on the right hand side. And here are the component parts. We have the fuel line. Make sure that it's fuel injection fuel line. Um, we've got a pre-filter for the fuel pump. Here's the fuel pump. Uh, this is, um, uh, found this on the Samba. It's actually a pretty, pretty good fuel pump. Um, it actually, uh, is a replacement for a Vanagon fuel pump, but it works perfect for the bus application. So what we're gonna do is mount this to the frame. So the fuel pump itself uh, kind of gets wrapped in this rubber and in hopes to isolate any buzzing um, that would happen if it was just mounted directly to the frame. Here's the fuel pump mounted to the frame using a hose clamp. And uh, this is a pretty convenient location. The output goes up to the fuel filter mounted on the firewall here. 
this extra coil is the return line and I've gotten it all um, connected and just ready for the engine just it's a lot easier when the engines out of the way to do stuff like this um, the other items that I've done was replace the boots on the CV one of the final uh, chassis prep parts is getting the radiators um, prepped and installed so we're actually going to detail that in the next video and uh, we'll go through the process of getting the radiators prepped and then installed and everything that needs to go into that. So stay tuned, that'll be coming up next week.